Okay, so I'm going to talk about uh, Perl 6 and how to create a compiler uh, using Perl 6 grammars. Actually, grammars are one of the most uh, interesting features apart from like some concurrency and uh, maybe something else, the Unicode support, for example. Uh, so some uh, additional thing that I didn't plan to talk about uh, until yesterday. So I'm driving here to uh, Munich and uh, on the road there was this sign which take like a couple of seconds to depass for the human being. <laughs> so you have all those uh, blocks inside other blocks and a list inside the first block. So yeah, so I decided to start with this example. So this is the same sign in Perl 6 using some Unicode characters. <laughs> And also notice that this is uh, the uh, this is not a letter C from uh, English. It's uh, uh, 100. Unfortunately, there's no 100 in circle in Unicode. I know uh, I don't know why. So nevertheless, so that's the sign that I'm going to pass with Perl 6. So I will start with some uh, sign grammar, the road sign, and then I can pass it, calling the dot pass method. So every every grammar starts with the top rule, and it. So in my example, it's just a list of uh, some groups. So plus is a regular expression, just the same quantifier as in Perl five. Then I explain what is a group. A group is, a group is either a single element or a grouped element with parentheses and some modifier in the end. And the element is the speed sign, again followed by some possible modifier. Actually, there should be more than one, so we can use uh, the star or plus here as well. And the speed limit itself, it's a number. Uh, who knows what that means? The uh, common uh, colon n. One person, two person, <laughs> two people. Uh, so in uh, Perl 6, there's uh, good support of Unicode, and there's the uniprop method that you can call on a character. We'll see what it belongs to in the Unicode space. So, for example, uh, for numbers, there are four categories. There's the general category's number, category number, and there are some smaller subdivisions, decimal, just a regular number, and uh, Latin numbers like the Roman C, and other characters, for example, those uh, circled numbers. So I can use this to pass everything. And finally, the modifier. Actually, there are of modifiers and uh -huh. uh, the vertical bar in the middle tells that it can be either this or that and some brackets around it. So the outer brackets are just uh, text characters and the internal brackets are brackets to group to alternatives. And the type modifier, in my case it's only one truck vehicle. It can be also, for example, the uh, yeah, just a car or a bus or whatever. Okay, so the grammar is done. So, I oh know, it's all, also the time modifier. Just uh, an interval of times, just literally with a dash. And the, the whole program again with something inside the grammar, and I can pass it, and this is what I see in the output. So, so you see, so it, it, the grammar passed that the whole sign is something modified with the time modifier for the night. Inside it, there is, uh, there's a list of two elements. First, just the, just the single speed sign, and then another speed sign with another type modifier. Oh, it works. <laughs> Maybe, it, uh, actually, yeah, Perl 6 is really fast enough, so it actually Perl 6 compiles this faster than I compiled the sign in my brain. Uh, so, okay, so that was an example, and now we are going to uh, the main subject. So we are going to talk about something that uses grammar and actually uh, the terminology, I'm not going to distinguish between compilers, translators or interpreters. In my talk it's all the same, of course, yeah, there's a big difference between all that, but for this, for the, for the purpose of demonstration of uh, policy grammars, it's not really important to distinguish between these. So, uh, if anyone ever tried to create a compiler before Perl 6 existed, uh, so you know that there are usually 
first two steps to create a lexer and then to create a parser. And after that, you can use this to create some like tree, parse tree, and work with it uh, to, uh, to understand what's the, the purpose of the program. Uh, in Perl 6, there's only one step. Lexer and parser is in one grammar file, and we'll see it in a minute. Uh, I'm not going to talk about optimization steps and steps to really produce the output in bytecode or binary code or a different language. Uh, so I will skip this completely, and I will try to execute this. So basically what I'm talking about is more than uh, more interpreter than compiler, but again, it's not important for today. So I'm going to create a compiler for language, and uh, I will spend a minute to show the language that we are going to work with. For some reason, uh, this language appeared to be really like Perl. I don't know why. Uh, so what this uh, language can do, this is not Perl. This is the language that we are parsing. It can print some numbers. It can use variables like my x. So, uh, so my x is uh, creating a variable, and so <laughs> basically the main difference between Perl and this is that you don't use seagulls to create variables. Uh, some arrays, again, uh, syntax is really like in Perl. Uh, nothing special. Hashes, uh, keys also can be used inside a... Uh, Hash. Uh, the numbers part. Actually, if you want to create a compiler or whatever that uses uh, human numbers and human strings, it's really difficult. You have to spend some time to create the parser or sub parser to uh, send numbers because there are many different variations of how you can create a number. You're going to use integers, uh, negative, uh, like scientific notations, and all those uh, should be understood by your compiler. So strings, again, just uh, double quotes around the string with some uh, possibility to index to access uh, separate items and some escaping characters, escaping sequences. So all that also has to be handled. It's actually it's quite boring and quite difficult to implement. I also allow string interpolations. So yeah, it's <laughs> the language uh, gets more and more close to Perl. Uh, uh, and now I use the seagull to interpolate. It's uh, quite uh, obvious. Uh, so uh, there are variables, and of course it can not, it can be, uh, the name of the variable can be longer, not necessarily only one character. And expressions. Uh, so again, uh, the kind of uh, hello world, uh, if you are talking about compilers, is the program that is a calculator. So to create a calculate, you need to spend some time to allow all those possible expressions, including parentheses, you have to keep, take care about uh, order in which you have to execute it. And also I will implement two forms of if, so the uh, inline uh, form, and also with inline else, and with some blocks. And comparisons, and loops, and, and the while. I believe this is the end. Yeah. So that was the language uh, that we are going to talk about. So more or less you can think about uh, we are parsing Perl without uh, seagulls and with some simplifications and some other limitations. Now we're trying to create the grammar for all that. So on the, big, uh, on the top level, you have the top rule. You have the grammar lingua, the lingua is the name of this language. And after you have uh, the grammar, you can use this grammar just to parse the source code in this language. So that's the, on the top level, that's the program that uh, takes your program, understand it, understands it, and later it will try to execute it. So on the top level, what it is, every program is just uh, a list of statements separated by semicolon. Very simple. Uh, so it's a regular expression, star means zero or more, double percent means just uh, you know, separated by. And there's a, a small difference if you have 1% or if you have 2%, it only changes the with the last separator after the last statement. Then I have to explain what a statement is. 
So it's, uh, in my language, it's either a variable declaration or an assignment or a function call. I didn't show any functions in my previous uh, examples, but actually there's one, print, uh, which just prints. Actually, it's also just the function, the built-in function that I implemented. And also notice the, those vertical bars. It, it looks like a uh, uh, piece of uh, ASCII graphics, but it, it, it's really nice. So the first OR doesn't have doesn't have anything on the left. So it's just, uh, it's not like empty or this or this or that. It's just either. So the first bar should be called either and all the rest should be called or. Either variable creation or assignment or function call. Again, then just, uh, so actually th this is the most enjoyable, uh, enjoyable part of the process of development. So you just explain, you just type what your language is. You try to understand every bit of it, so you tell that the variable declaration is a string my followed by something which is a variable name, and then later you have to explain, of course, what it is. Assignment is something, again, with a variable name, equal signed value, and the function call is just the function uh, name followed by a variable name. I don't use uh, parentheses there. All the rest is really simple, uh, and of course you can uh, create more uh, complex uh, expressions for passing the variable name for the values. Again, uh, this slash d is just the first approach to get uh, a parser for numbers. In reality, it will be much, much more difficult than just plus uh, slash d plus. And the function name in this uh, implementation, there will be only one function, which is called say or print, whatever we call it. And it's a built-in function. I will not uh, discuss the user-defined functions. It's really a, um, a different story. So on the left, it's an example of the program. On the right, it's the parse tree uh, that my compiler sees after, that my compiler builds after it sees this program. So basically, my x converts to uh, a statement with a variable decoration, x equals 44 is another statement, and another type of the statement is an assignment, and say x is, uh, yeah, basically again the statement, and a function call. And you see so that, uh, that uh, l in the two bottom lines I see what is a function and which variable it's operating with. But of course it's not only about passing, about understanding what language, uh, what the program is uh, about, it's also about executing it, so we have to create some something, some code that will execute it. And from this moment, uh, you can yeah, behave differently. You can either just directly execute it, as a, just the regular interpreter will do. It sees the instructions, it passes it, and it does something. Or you can create the abstract syntax tree to create uh, some structure of your program, and then go through all the leaves of the tree and execute it. So we'll go into create, you know, sim I will show a simple uh, example of how you can use the action to keep variables. So I create, I'm creating here the global hash to uh, store all variables. It can be moved inside the, the, the class, uh, the grammar class or the actions class later, but it can be also a global one. And so you see, so this rule variable declaration is a part of the grammar. So that's the part of the grammar. It's one of the rules. And inside it, I have this my variable name, the regular expression to express the, uh, the grammar rule. And after that, I have a block with some Perl 6 code, which is executed when this rule is passed. So when the uh, Perl 6 uh, parser uh, sees that my program matches this rule, it will call this block, and inside this block I can do something. For example, with variable declaration, I just uh, create a, uh, a slot in this hash and fill it with zero. Very handy. And uh, when, for example, there's an assignment, I again can add an action which will use uh, the variable name to access the hash. Uh, what you have to uh, notice here is, uh, like, in front of dollar in the green line, there are two characters, tilde and plus. 
All those are Perl 6 prefixes that, that uh, change the type of the variable. So it was the match, of the so-called match object. So dollar uh, value, for example, a dollar angled brackets uh, variable name is the, an object, and I create either a string or a number out of it. So I create a string to uh, get the variable name. I create uh, the integer number to get the value of this uh, assignment uh, value. The function call uh, is similar. So I just do something. I just print the variable if it exists and if the function name is say. So I'm implementing only one function. So what you can uh, uh, see here is that in Perl 6, you can really switch between languages in one text file, source code. So on the, on the top scale, initially, it was Perl 6. Then there was some regular expression. Inside that regular expression, the language was again switched to Perl 6. So it's, and for example, instead of EQ, you can use tilde tilde, and it will be again a regular expression inside Perl 6, inside regular expression, inside Perl 6. It's, uh, it's something like this, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really handy if you, yeah. OK, so uh, the actions. Uh, so uh, all those actions uh, that were inside uh, the regular expression inside Perl 6, they are OK until they are really small one, like one or two lines. But as they become bigger, we get this problem again, and it's better just to move everything to a separate class for uh, keeping actions. So I will create the uh, actions class, and the methods in this class, the names of the message methods, should match the names of the rules and tokens in the grammar class. So if I have in the grammar the variable declaration class uh, rule, then I should have the variable declaration method in the actions class. Very, very straightforward. And when I pass the text uh, source, I can just pass these actions in a separate attribute. Uh, instead of this syntax, you can use a fat arrow. So actions, fat arrow, lingua actions, it's also, it also works. Uh, a side story, passing numbers. So it's just a, a tiny bit of uh, test cases that you have to handle. Uh, so all possible formats. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. You, you can extend this list uh, infinitely. I just loop over them and pass them and say if it's okay or not. So for the number, there's a separate grammar that I created. So it's a number. So it's just a number, and the number is a uh, sequence of digits, digits, which is really simple, and it only works, as you understand, for uh, positive integers. Well, for, for zero as well. Uh, but then you have to uh, try to think how you can implement minus sign. But then you, ah, yeah, I can also use plus in front of the number. And maybe you can attach some uh, fractional part followed by a uh, uh, dot. And if you will do it this way, you immediately will get really messy regular expression, which is uh, difficult to understand and to change. Instead, it's better to use this uh, approach. And you just say the number is either an integer or like a floating point number or something else. And then later you explain every, every single uh, format Usually, it's much, much simpler. And actually, the source code of Perl 6, uh, the, uh, for Rakuda, I mean, it's, all, uh, it's also using this approach. So it's uh, yeah, just a list of potential formats that you can handle. A really interesting thing, how to build a world. So, so imagine, so you got the number, one of these, and then you have to understand basically what's that. So you understood that this string is a number. But it's a string, so you have to convert it to the number. Of course, you can create uh, an action class to understand. So if I have a, signature, a sign, if it's mi minus, then I have to multiply the number by minus 1. If I have a fractional point, I have to do something, something, something. But it's difficult. What is really, <laughs> like, yeah, it was a surprise that I can use a single plus. I can just use, I can allow Perl 6 to just uh, combine all those characters to number. Because I'm already, uh, I'm sure that this string 
uh, that is contained in uh, dollar slash is already a number. I understood that this is a number. I passed it myself. But after that, I just allow Perl because my numbers are the same numbers that, that Perl 6 understands. So it's really easy. Just a single character converts your uh, match object to number. So just use this trick. If you see something similar that already is implemented, just use it. Actually, I believe that Perl 6 should have some standard uh, uh, grammar libraries for, for example, passing numbers or maybe strings with uh, like all those ex escape characters, escape sequences, etc. Okay, uh, so the, the syntax uh, tree. So imagine that. So yeah, I think you, <laughs> everybody here is uh, familiar with uh, what syntax tree is. Uh, basically, this uh, expression is uh, can be presented in a tree. Each node has only two children. And each of the children can be either the end node with a digit, or it can be another node with another arithmetical operation. This is simple, but I decided to go even further and allow more than one child. So the same example, instead of like four nodes, can be presented with two nodes. Just plus minus is the same. It doesn't matter because they are still executed from left to right. The same about multiplication and division. So again, just execute everything from left to right, and you're done. Uh, in Perl 6, to build a uh, parse tree, or the abstract uh, syntax tree, you can use two methods, make and made. So that's a piece of an action class. It's a method that uh, pop-ups when the integer is found. And you just take this integer, again, plus converts it to a number, and you just save it in a node by, by calling the make uh, method. So it's somewhere in the memory. In, I'm not printing it uh, to the screen immediately. I'm just placing it somewhere uh, to the integer uh, something, and I can use it later. So in the first line of this subroutine, I'm using uh, the dot made uh, method to get that object that was put later uh, to the integer. Again, uh, on the second line, it's, uh, I'm taking the, sig the sign, and after I have everything, I just again make my node and put it to the number. So I will prepare the number, and I will pass it to the next level. And in the end, in the top level, I can just take everything that was just made on the previous levels, and I will not care. At this moment, I don't care what was there inside. So something inside, would it be just a, regular, uh, would it be just a single number, or, uh, for example, uh, an expression? I will have to get a number here, a single number that I can just use and take, and yeah, it's done. Uh, the important thing about AST is that you don't have to immediately execute the code that you pass. For example, uh, take this simple example. I want to implement an if construction, mm. but obviously in this example I don't have to print the past word because the condition is negative. But if you will implement it uh, with a simple action, you can create a grammar, so you can just append the optional if in front of your uh, expression, function call in this case, but then in the action, you have to understand if this condition is true, then you will uh, execute the action. And this makes uh, the action uh, methods really complicated, d difficult, and yeah. So it's better just to create the path tree and then go through all those nodes and execute it. Uh, for the uh, uh, language uh, in hand, I created a number of AST node types. Actually, uh, yeah, just it, it's, it's really simple. Basically, what is an uh, abstract syntax tree node is a place to keep some values. For example, the variable name node keeps the, uh, so, sorry, the uh, scalar declaration node uh, instructs the later evaluator part of the program which variable you are creating, which value to put in, uh, like default value is zero, for example. So my A declaration will be converted to this simple uh, abstract syntax tree 
with two nodes. So it's just some top level. And inside the top level, there are statements. So remember the first slide uh, from the grammar was on the top level is statement plus. And statement plus converts to an array of statements. And the first statement, the only statement in this program is the scalar declaration, which contains the name of a variable and the initial value. Again, have you another statement with the declaration or assignment? Again, just, just continue. So this is more difficult, so uh, uh, vertically you can read the pieces of the program. It just creates an array, assigns an element to one of uh, the elements, then create a, uh, creates a hash and do the same. So even for these four lines, the uh, syntax tree is really already difficult. And it gets, of course, more and more difficult, uh, but you don't care because it's uh, just in memory. So this is my uh, example of what I uh, have in this. Uh, so for every every potential action, for example, you want to declare a scalar, you want to declare an array, you want to declare a hash, just create separate uh, types of nodes. And impl in implementation will be really one line in, in, in uh, almost uh, each of them. So uh, at this URL, you can uh, take a look at the code. Uh, and we can, and of course, uh, you can, uh, there's a test, a test suite, so yeah, run the test suite. Probably I have to re-implement it to make it in parallel, uh, as Jonathan proposed, uh, <laughs> but nevertheless, so yeah. So more or less that's it. Uh, this, uh, the addition, an addition. So there are some tricks, actually, when you work with uh, grammars, you will understand uh, that some uh, times you can just cut corners, you can create much uh, simpler grammar. For example, uh, a piece of program that you want to execute to create the compiler for, for this piece of language, in the grammar, on the top level, you have uh, some variable declarations separated by, col uh, by semicolon. And the variable declaration is either a scalar declaration or an array, array declaration. So there are only two types of variables. And for each, I uh, create a rule for the scalar declaration with dollar and for arrays with an at character. Sounds simple, but what have to uh, be done in the action? and which action. So the first approach is, so on the left is the grammar piece, on the right is the corresponding action. So in the action, I have to, in the action for variable declaration, I have to understand if it's uh, a scalar or an array. I have to explicitly check what it is, and I can create the if uh, check, right? But instead, I can just create uh, smaller actions for uh, lower levels, uh, mm, low level rules or tokens. So instead of uh, checking it in the variable declaration, I can uh, just mm, move my uh, code inside the uh, separate declaration for scalar and for array. So you see, it's not only uh, like simpler in the structure, but also the lines are shorter because you don't have to uh, access nested elements. So you don't have to like line three on this you don't have to access the variable name inside the scalar declaration you can just directly uh, on the bottom access this variable name and assign something to this uh, slot multi methods uh, so Perl 6 is really good with supporting multi uh, keyword uh, another piece of uh, another example uh, so this time I create two variables and I assign something to, to them. So I, I implemented the assignment rule. It's just variable name followed by uh, the equal sign. Yeah, notice the trick with the dollar. So for array uh, element, it's a dollar like in Perl 5. Uh, but the thing is that uh, the uh, semantics is different for those assignments. So it's so on the top, uh, if it's an array, then I will have the index. Uh, I check first if there's an index, so line two. If there's index, then I, I'm dealing with an array. 
element and I'm assigning it. If this is not, then it's a scalar. That's the first approach. The better approach is to use multi keyword and just create two methods with the same name assignment. And instead of if, I can just use the where clause to distinguish between two cases. So if there's no index, it's a variable assignment, a scalar assignment. If there's an index, I can use this index to access the element inside the array. So I think this is really much handier. Uh, maybe it's a bit wordier, for example, so there are too many words, so multi, where, method, method. I think that Perl 6 do not really need this multi keyword in some cases, or just some pragma can implement, so I'm okay with having more than one method with the same name. I know what I'm doing, but I still need to use this multi keyword because otherwise it will not be accepted. But yeah, that's fine. And also, you can use the same trick in the grammar. So it's not necessarily actions that can be multi-methods. Uh, so uh, a third example is I'm declaring a variable, and I'm creating some expression. Uh, I have to calculate, calculate this expression, get the number, and assign it to a variable. How I can do it? Actually, this is uh, the part of the calculator uh, grammar. So it's see, so this is, uh, this is grammar. I also can use multi-keyword with tokens and with uh, rules. And uh, instead of explicitly explaining that plus is a plus, minus is a minus, I can say that uh, there's the uh, uh, first precedence of the operators, then the second precedence. And if I will implement, for example, double star to power operations, it will be uh, the third level. Uh, well, depending from which side you count, it can be the first or the third. Uh, and I can also just uh, group all those uh, explanations in a, separ in a, in a single multi uh, rule. So multi token op one, it's the first level of operator precedence is plus minus. But token op two is the second level, just for multiplication and division. That's it. So. I just uh, create multi-token, and uh, I can use this index later. You see the second rule from the bottom, multi-rule expression, uses this op with some number, which was passed as the uh, argument in the multi-rule expression. And I can also, uh, for example, uh, this uh, second from the bottom rule, it uses recursively itself, but on the next level. So. Uh, to pass the uh, expression, I just start, uh, it's in the middle, rule expression. I just start on the first level, so it means that on the first level I'm looking for plus and minus, and then the grammar recursively calls itself to find all those uh, multiplications and divisions on the second level inside it. So probably you cannot see how it works from here, but you will definitely uh, end up with this if you will try to implement it uh, line by line. So yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so the uh, slides are the slide share and uh, code in GitHub. If you have any questions, we can uh, talk about that. If not, uh, yeah, I can show maybe some GitHub code. That's fine, though. <laughs> Uh, then, uh, well, any, no questions, really. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so. If uh, we can connect to internet, I can show you. Uh, oh no, actually, I have everything here. Uh, so, also another thing that I did not uh, uh, show is that you can. Uh, you can, uh, so the grammar. So you see uh, here, uh, on the, uh, in the place where I define the grammar, I can also use all the, uh, those uh, Perl 6 features that are available for Perl 6 uh, object orientation. So the grammar actually is a class. A class of special type, but it's still a, a class. That's why it can be extended uh, so I can say that this class is something. 
And in my case, I uh, just for demonstration purposes, I just declare that my language is command a commandable language. So I explain the language here, but I do not uh, think about how comments will be uh, will be treated by the compiler. I do it in a separate clause. And thus, I add the rule. Uh, so this grammar does some numbers. So uh, let's look at the, for example, the number. So that's the uh, class to pass all those numbers. So floating point uh, integers uh, with exponential parts, etc. I just moved it to separate class. Of course, it can be done inside, so all these can be copied to the class. That's uh, yeah, how you design the code. And the commentable language uh, grammar, it's a really interesting thing. So, uh, so you know that there are rules and there are tokens in grammars. So the difference is, do you have a question? Yeah, so the difference is, is how you treat spaces. For example, a variable name should be a token because you cannot allow spaces inside uh, the variable. Well, yeah, in, in Pol6 you can probably do something, you, you allow dashes, why not allow space? But uh, numbers, again, you don't have spaces. But in other places, for example, in assignment, you have the variable name, you have equal sign, you have uh, the value. You have three pieces, but for you it's not important if you have spaces between uh, around the equal sign or not. So you can use rule, and rule will just uh, internally uh, skip those spaces, and you will even not notice. You will not know about if there are spaces or not. For your language, it's not important. And uh, all that uh, is handled uh, by the predefined WS, or white space uh, regular expression, which is already there in Pill 6. But I can also, so there's the uh, built-in WS uh, rule, uh, regex, but I can also redefine it. So here I'm redefining it, and I allow just uh, inline comments, for example. And my inline comment is a comment in a C style with a slash star surrounded, uh, or maybe some one-line comments. It's not used in this grammar, but it can be used uh, in other places, like uh, hash and everything until the end of the line. So, yeah, just redefine the built-in uh, regular expression and you will get completely different behavior, which is achieved uh, really simple. Uh, you can just add is commentable language and you're done. So you had a question. The slide of the grammar. This one. No, no, no. Yeah, if you will uh, do it, you will get uh, what is it? 540 characters. That's fine. Uh, you will go to my first example. You see that it's really handy, right? <laughs> so. But again, yeah, yeah. You, you just think uh, what you allow. You can. Yeah, you can do it in yeah <laughs> more than. Okay, I think it's more or less over. If I'm correct, then yeah. Uh, this one uh, was demonstrated for the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a different one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>